Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com and today I wanted to make a video to talk about the difference between a durability issue and normal wear and tear when it comes to soccer shoes. I get questions about durability on a daily basis and it's very difficult to answer some of these questions mainly because there are so many different variables when it comes to durability and soccer shoes and a lot of people like to mislabel shoes as having durability issues when in fact a durability issue is something that is few and far between. Now when it comes to the difference between a durability issue and normal wear and tear, that's really what I want to differentiate in today's video. And I think that a lot of people have unrealistic expectations as far as how long their shoes should last and how long their shoes are actually going to last. So stick around and I'll cover all of these topics. So what exactly is a durability issue? The concept is actually quite simple. A durability issue implies a flaw in the design meaning that one specific model of soccer shoe, every single pair sold, 100% of the pairs will all have the exact same failure, meaning a durability issue, in the same spot to the point where the shoe is no longer wearable. And obviously this problem would have to occur in an unreasonable amount of time, let's say the first couple of weeks from when you get them. Now this is something that, like I said, is few and far between. I've been wearing pretty much every single high end and a lot of the lower end shoes for the last two years just through product testing and I have to say that I've never come across a specific model of soccer shoe that I truly believe had a durability issue where I felt like 100% of the pairs were going to break because of a design flaw. It's extremely uncommon and not something that you see very often at all. Um, I've actually been a part of the product testing um, for durability and performance of soccer shoes and you'd be surprised at the lengths that these companies go through to ensure that they're putting out a high quality product. Contrary to pop popular belief, a lot of these companies are really trying to put out the best product possible. They're not trying to sell you a shoe that is not going to last a long time. They want their products to last. They want you to be a happy customer. Obviously, there are kind of manufacturing defects where you are going to get a product that perhaps did have some kind of flaw in the manufacturing process, but that's why you're covered by a manufacturer's warranty or even by a warranty from the store that you bought it from. So if something like that does happen to you, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a durability issue. It just means that you might have gotten a bad pair, which happens from time to time. Now, in terms of what exactly is a durability issue and an example of one, the only one that comes to mind that I can remember or that I've been around for is the Nike Mercurial Superfly 1. For those of you guys that remember, Andre Arshavin, Drugba, and Luis Fabiano all ripped a pair when the shoe was still in product testing. It was supposed to release a month after once the shoes were kind of seen on TV ripped, the upper basically blew apart. And what Nike actually did is they realized, yes, there is a flaw in this design. We're not going to release it to the public like this. They canceled all of the manufacturing or all the ship outs for that particular version of the Superfly 1. They re-engineered the upper, redesigned everything, remanufactured everything, and the shoe actually released in a modified version several months later and the problem was no longer. So that's really the only kind of situation where I can think of an actual durability issue where there was a legitimate flaw in the design where shoes were malfunctioning not because of the fault of the consumer but because of the fault of the design of the product. The next thing I want to talk about is sole separation. This is probably the most common form of what most people consider to be a durability issue and I think that most people don't realize and again have unrealistic expectations of how long their shoes are actually going to last and what is the difference between normal wear and tear and an actual durability issue. Now one of the shoes that is being harshly criticized right now, at least in my opinion, is the Nike Hypervenom Phantom. A lot of people are complaining about premature sole separation on this particular shoe. And the reason for it is actually very simple when you think about it for a second. You're bonding a smooth sole plate surface to a heavily textured upper. So yes, of course, that initial little bit of glue that's sealing that bond between the sole plate and the upper is going to break relatively quickly, especially because of how soft the Nike Skin Synthetic is. With that being said, is there an actual durability concern if you do get that little bit of premature sole separation around the very lip of the sole plate? The answer to that question is no, this is normal. It's gonna happen with pretty much every other soccer shoe. And what you have to realize is the shoe's not only glued around the very lip of the shoe, this, the upper runs all the way on the underside of the sole plate itself and is glued right to the base of the sole. So it takes a lot of force to actually separate the sole plate from the upper to the point where, like I said, 
the shoe is unusable and you're actually looking at a major durability issue. Now, am I saying that this is something that might not, that could not happen? Absolutely not. It could happen, absolutely, um, with any soccer shoe, not just the Hyperventum Phantom. But if you do see a little bit of sole separation around the very lip of the sole plate, perhaps you look down and there's a little bit of dirt caught in your toe, that's not something to be alarmed by. This is very, very normal for any soccer shoe, not just the Hypervenom Phantom, so keep that in mind. The last point that I wanted to touch on is your responsibility as a consumer to wear the product as it was intended to be worn. Now, the first thing that comes to mind when I say this type of statement is that it's super important to buy the right type of stud pattern for the right type of playing surface. And those of you guys that have been following my channel for a while now, know that I harp on this topic a lot. I've made several videos on it and it really is that important not only from a performance standpoint but also when it comes to the durability of your soccer shoes. If you buy a soft ground stud pattern and use it on soft ground, you're likely not to have any issues. But if you buy a soft ground stud pattern and wear it on artificial grass, that's when you're going to run into problems. Again, coming back to the product testing, companies do not send you a pair of artificial grass shoes and ask you to test them out on soft ground. Um, they're made for one type of playing surface. That's why they have all the different stud patterns available. It's not only, like I said, going to help with performance, but it's also going to impact the durability. So buy the right stud pattern for the right playing surface. Second thing to take into consideration is the tremendous amount of abuse that a soccer shoe actually will take. And this is going into the realm of unrealistic expectations of how long your shoe should last. You have to look at the type of playing conditions that you're frequenting. If you're playing in very, very wet conditions on a consistent basis, it's unlikely that your shoes are going to last as long as somebody who's playing in very favorable, perhaps dry, really nice field playing conditions, um, even if you do have the same model. Um, it really is up to you to really decide if it's worth it to buy one pair of shoes, if it's worth it to budget for two pairs of shoes, just to allow, um, kind of divide up the hours that you're gonna put on each of these shoes. And this also comes into play, how many times a week are you playing? Are you playing once a week, twice a week, five times a week, every single day of the week? If that's the case, if you're playing a lot and you're putting in a lot of hours on one single pair of shoes, you're going to run into a shorter lifespan with that particular pair. If you really are playing a lot, if you're playing at a highly competitive level, I strongly recommend having at least two pairs of shoes in your bag, um, just so you have one to play in, one to keep as a backup, and you can divide up the hours between games and practices, um, and that will definitely increase not only the lifespan of one pair of shoes, but the lifespan of two pairs of shoes. And again, budgeting is really what you have to look out for when it comes to buying one pair of shoes versus two pairs. The last thing to consider when it comes to your responsibility as a consumer to maintain um, that you wear the shoes in the way that they were intended to be worn is any bad habits that you may have. I get lots of people asking, my cleats wore out prematurely, and then I ask them, did you walk around on cement in them? And they say yes. Well, that's not the product's fault, that's your fault, because these shoes with the cleats are not intended to be walked around on on cement because they're gonna grind away. Another thing that I get a lot of is I drag my foot and the upper ripped, um, is this a durability issue? No, it's not a durability issue. Um, the upper rip because you were dragging your feet. It's just that simple. If you kick the ground and the sole separates and you got a giant chunk of dirt in there, that's because you kick the ground, not because there is a durability issue with the shoe. The shoe will do its part if you use it properly, um, but if you use it improperly, that's when you're going to run into durability issues. All right, guys, that's it for my video on the difference between a durability issue and normal wear and tear when it comes to soccer shoes. The main takeaway here is that you have to realize that your shoes are not going to last forever, and the way they look from right out of the box is not the way they're going to look even after the first playing session. So if something does go wrong, most likely it is a minor problem as opposed to a major problem. But if it is a major problem, like I said, um, any kind of premature issue regarding the durability of the boot is covered by the manufacturer's warranty or even the store where you bought them from. So again, just keep that in mind. If you guys do have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this style of video, be sure to leave a like down below and also let me know if there's any other topics that you guys would like to see me kind of talk about and discuss. Um, and again, if you have anything to add to the conversation, leave a comment down below and we'll definitely get a bit of a discussion going. Um, if you did enjoy today's video and you're not subscribed already, be sure to hit that subscribe button for daily videos on all the latest soccer gear. You can find all of my social media information linked down below in the description, so go ahead and check that out. Other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, thanks for watching.